All right. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. I think it's time to begin. My name is Samantha Spott. I'm the adult and teen librarian at Whitman Library at Second and Snyder in South Philadelphia. We're joined this afternoon by local artist and educator Shira Walensky, Dr. Amy Davis from Furness High School, and our 10 wonderful student poets. I can't wait for you all to hear their work. Our program today will last about an hour, starting with some introductions. Uh, slide. There we are. Um, we'll hear some in introductions from Dr. Davis and from Shira. Uh, we'll see the short film Song of Myself, and then we'll have a poetry reading from our student poets. And then at the end of the program, we'll have a brief Q&A where you can ask a question either by raising your hand uh, to use your mic or tapping, typing your questions into the chat box or the Q&A box. And please save your questions for that time. Very quickly, but very importantly, before I, we start, I want to acknowledge that the land the Free Library is on is part of the traditional territory of the Lanai Lenape people. Um, we honor and respect those communities who came before us and those who are still with us. And I want to tell you a little bit about our library today. Um, our library is open for in-person browsing and computer use on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1 to 4. We also have curbside pickup services available and some exciting events coming up. So you can follow us at facebook.com slash Whitman Library. You can check out our free library website for our hours and our services at library, freelibrary.org slash Whitman. And you can also follow us on Instagram at, at Second and Snyder Library. And with that, I will turn it over to Shira. Hi, everyone. I just um, wanted to say thank you so much to the library, especially the Whitman branch. You are an awesome, um, incredible branch. I wanted to say thank you to Miss Davis. Um, I wanted to say thank you to all of the incredibly talented student poets who are here today. It was a thrill to work with everyone. I wanna say thank you to Walt Whitman, um, who was the inspiration for this. Um, so just very briefly, um, last spring, it was a school was still in session. It was March of 2020. I went to Miss Davis's office and said, would you wanna work on a poetry and video project? She said, yes. And within days we were at home, not knowing what was going on with this pandemic. Um, but we pulled through and we did a poetry workshop and I was impressed and awed by the student's interpretation of Walt Whitman and um, the themes around connections to nature and, um, and unknown heroes really spoke to us in that moment and still really speak. Um, and so you're going to hear some great poetry today. And also just to let you know, the video is part of a series. It is ongoing. Um, and some of the other voices you're going to hear in the film are uh, women from, who go to a program called Southeast by Southeast through mural arts. This is, um, these are women who are from, refugee women who are from Bhutan and I've worked with them for a long time. Um, this video is about voices, how they carry distinctness and history and about interconnections between people of, from all walks of life. So with that note, I'm gonna turn it over. Actually, wait, am I gonna do the video now? Okay, sorry. <laughs> Just blanked on the order for a second. Um, give me one second to queue up. I celebrate myself. And sing myself. I loaf and invite my soul. I lean and loaf at my ease, observing a spear of summer grass. I am 28. And Philly is where I was born, hoping to cease, not till death. A harbor for good or bad. I permit to speak at every hazard, nature without check, with original energy. Houses and rooms are full of perfumes. The shelves are crowded with perfume. My respiration and inspiration, the beating of my heart. <sighs> passing of blood and air through my lungs. The delight along 
or in the rush of streets. Or in the field and hillside, the feeling of health, the full noon chill, the song of me, rising from bed and meeting the sun. Rising from bed and meeting the sun. Have you reckoned a thousand acres much? Have you reckoned the earth much? Have you felt so proud to get at the meaning of poems? Stop this day and night with me, you shall possess the origin of all poems. Trippers and askers surround me, people I meet, the effect upon me of my early life, or the ward or city I live in, or the nation, the latest dates, discoveries, inventions, societies, authors, old, and new. The sickness of one of my folks or of myself or ill doing or loss or lack of money or depressions or exaltations, battles. I in this mystery, here we stand, apart from the pulling and hauling, stand what I am, and limitless are leaves stiff or drooping in the fields and brown ants and little wells beneath them. A child said, what is the grass? Oh. Uh. Sire said, Papu that day, no e came in the A child said, What is the grass? You tap, but Sale, so do. I do not know uh, what it is any more than he. How could I answer the child? I do not know what it is any more than he. I guess the grass eat itself a child. Or I guess the grass is itself a child. Mosso to you, gas bunny, but say hula. The produce babe of the vegetation. The produce babe of the vegetation. Or I guess it is a Uniform hieroglyphic. And now it seems the beautiful uncut hair of grapes. It may transpire from the breast of young men. It may be had, I know that them, I could have loved them. It may be from old people or from offspring taken too soon out of their mother's lips. Any here who are the mother left. The grass is very dark to be from the white head of old mothers. Darker than the bears of old men. Drop to come under the roof. Of mouth. What do you think of the young and old men? And what do you think has become of the women and children? And what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there really is no death. Earth of the slumbering and liquid trees. Earth of the departed sunset. Earth of the departed sunset. Earth of departed sunset. Earth of the mountains. Earth of the mountains, misty top. Earth of the vitreous pour of the full moon, just tinged with blue. 
Earth of shine and dark mottling the tide of the river. Earth of the limpid gray clouds, brighter and clearer for my sake. All grows unwell and outwell, and nothing collapses. Sabai kura agi bardai ra kiji dai jancha kiji pani nusta mudai na. The earth good and the stars good, and their adjuncts all good. <laughs> So guys, I just wanted to say one more thank you. Um, Latasha Billington is also a star of this film. And so I wanted to thank her. And also just to say, again, um, most of the voices that you hear other than Tash are students who are learning English. So we're talking about dif difficult language, difficult topics. So I just want to give a huge thanks to the students. And I'm going to turn this over to Miss Davis. Okay, are you going to share your screen so that we can see the poems? You're muted. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, let me just switch. Give me one second. So sorry. Um, my screen just while Drop. she's loading that up, I can just let you guys know how wonderful my students are. Uh, many of them not only do their schoolwork fabulously, but they also participate in many different um, activities, such as uh, student-led announcements. You can watch us on YouTube at Furnace Falcon TV, and you'll see many of our students doing announcements. They sing, they dance. There's tons of talent in this room. So when you're driving by Third and Mifflin and you see our school, you know all of the wonderful things that live there. So you're going to get a little taste of that right now. And we're going. Are we ready to begin? Okay, you guys. Here we go. We're going to begin with Christopher. Christopher, whenever you're ready, you can unmute yourself. Hello, everyone. Um, hope you're having a great day. Um, I'm going to read my poem. Um, I've seen outside my window, new burn birds, the baseball stadium and brick houses and the yellow sunrise. And I've seen the Walmart near the Delaware River where these birds are loud and obnoxious. Then they purposely throw their white gooey on cars. I've seen bushes grow in my front yard where flies, water bugs and fairy cats live. And I've seen bees in the middle of the Mifflin Square Park searching for sweet flowers they love so much. I've seen the days pass down where leaves from my backyard change color from brown to green. And I've seen the beautiful sunflower in my kitchen window bloom to a big yellow sun. I felt the breeze feel warmer where winter leaves and spring comes. And I've seen the grass near that lake in FDR Park gently waving at me asking how my day was. Thanks, Christopher. That was great. Love the imagery. <laughs> we move on to Yao. Yao has some onomatopoeia in her poem, so maybe you can find that. Yao, whenever you're ready. Yeah. So my name is Yao, and this is my poem. <laughs> Did you hear some songs from far away? Tick-tock, tick-tock, tick-tock. Is it the sound of a cock or the sounds of splashing water? I've seen a child running across the street, bypassing the church. And there is a secret garden. The bird on the branch starts singing. I've seen the bridge belonging alone, 
the lawn and the, the flower and the grasses dancing in the wind. What are the songs? Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. Is it the song of our folks calling for mate? Or the song of the train driving, driving to the next place? I've seen the smoke rising from the chimney and hear laughter from the house. I've seen the star twinkling on a starry night and I stand there looking up at the sky, looking forward to my future. Tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. The sounds came again. I don't know where the sounds came before. Or maybe just my illusions for my secret garden. Okay. That's Thank it. You, Thank you so much. That was awesome, Yao. Wonderful suspense. Um, I'm not sure if Aileen was able to make it. Is Aileen here? Maybe we should wait. Aileen is trying to get in. Um, could we go to the next person and try to see if we can get her in and do her last? Sure. Okay. All right. Oh, so next we have Aviel Jackson. He is not able to be here. So Christopher is going to read Aviel's poem about his heroes. Chris, you ready? Um, yeah, I am. Um, my hero, and into my uncle, so strong and skillful hands, dance around connecting wires with percussion and accuracy. And to my mother's clever and wise mind, she ponders, but we will eat tonight. I am very pleased she knows her son. Every dinner is a delight. And to my sister voice, as it fills, fills the room with soothing tones and most creative lyrics she picks. Into my father, quick jabs as he sidesteps left and right. If, if only he went pro, he would most definitely put up entertaining shows. And into my cussing, her skills in art, more amazing than fireworks, lights up the sky as her paint, brush, soars and flies. And into my grandma, blessed by her craftiness, her creativity holds no bounds, such as a bottomless pit. Shira, can you move it up a little bit? Is that the end? Yeah, a little bit more. And into my teeth, oh wait, am I in the, okay, yeah. And into my best friend who must have the power to mind read the way he always knows what to say when I'm down, no matter what no ifs or buts, he will always make me smile. And into my teacher, her mercy, benevolence and understanding, my trying with my grades by lifting it up for me to pass. Thank you, Christopher. We get a real good view of what's going on with Aviel through his descriptions of his family. Thank you. Okay, so Yuxing, you are up next with your very exciting poem. Hi. Hi, I'm Yuxing and <clears throat> And to the brave girl, a man holding a knife threatens a woman, a youthful girl kicked the knife away by feet, who saved a woman's life. And to those supporting Black Lives Matter, they stand up and try to show their power. They are trying to help make Black Lives better. And to those who try to help their community stopping the looting, they protect the markets and people. And to those nurses fighting the virus, they stare straightly at the virus malicious eyes and rub back the patient's life. Thank you, Yuxing. We can really see where she was in time when she wrote that poem last year. I believe it was around this time last year, maybe a little later. Thank you, Yuxing. 
Next we have Anla. Anla has beautiful language in her poem. Let's see if you can find it. Go ahead, An. Hi, I'm Anla and here's my poem. When the winter comes, I think of two places, the place that hot like summer and the place that cold from the inside. Vietnam never changed through four seasons. The weather, the cultures, the people always stay the same. People there sometimes go shirtless when they step outside in the morning humid air and afternoon heat. No one wants to go outside that time. Few cars, but many, many motorbikes. Ông nội, bà nội và em đang phóng xe trên phố với chiếc xe máy. Grandpa, grandma and me are zooming on motorbikes. Outside at night in Phố Nguyễn Huệ, the place is throbbing and glowing even more than morning. When the winter comes to Philadelphia, everyone comes to everyone wear warm coat, hat, and gloves to go outside. I only see people come out in the morning with warm and soft clothes. At night, Philadelphia is a place that is cold and quiet. That make me feel like I'm alone thinking about my warm home. Beautiful, Anla. Thank you so much. So beautiful. And next we have Stella. Stella has some really interesting images that she also viewed um, during the beginning months of the pandemic. So maybe you recognize some of the images she, she's going to talk about. Uh, my name is Stella. This is my poem. I've seen empty parks in the city, parks where you used to see people, and even dolphins all around, everywhere we go. I've seen the small streets all over the world, teeming with jellyfish and dolphin, and nature taking over in the heart of Italy. I've seen the brave ones fighting on the front lines in hospitals, and the silent voices around us who do their best to, to survive. I've seen the light at the end and the darkness around. Thank you, Stella. Great job. Oh, Victoria, Victoria is next. You're really gonna enjoy her poem. Go ahead, Victoria. <laughs> Um, hi, my name is Victoria Tobing, and I'll be reading my poem. And to the Mulia family who lives across the pond in a small wooden house with an open porch that prepared buburayam and sop and shares it every Wednesday before sundown. And to the boy with glasses who juggles three jobs, a newspaper deliverer by bike, a busboy in a warkop and meatball diner, to pay for his brother's school and sister's kindergarten money and powdered box milk after his father passed a month before. And to the school girl who's always full of smiles that gives change to the old homeless man right in front of Indomarat at Baru Barat Burmai Street, even if it was just less than Sariburupia, so he can get a bottle of water and a nasi bungkus. And to the tall nurse at Surabaya Siluam Hospital who stayed and held the old man's shaky hands while his own children did not think to come and visit. And on the bottom there, Victoria has some translations for you so you can see some of the words that she's referring to. And next we have Bawa. Bawa has images from places you may recognize. Bawa, if when the screen is ready, you can start. Okay. Hi, I'm Bawa. This is my poem. I have seen the friendly crossing guard with the yellow vest helping kids cross Porter Street. And to the neighbors who woke up early in the snowy day and shove the snow off the path. I have seen the corner store owner who always wears a mask and a white apron to provide half-price breakfast for students. 
During the pandemic, I have seen my mom, a car dealer, come home at 1 a.m. Her hands are dry using sanitizer working in the casino. I have seen the crimson and pink rose in the booth on Valentine's Day. And the yellow sunflower, Xiang Ri Kui, filled with dazzling sunlight in August. I have seen the drizzle falling on Poppy's fluffy hair at the bus store. And I have seen her ring foaming splashes on the ground on my way from Furness High School. Thank you, Bawa. Lovely images. I believe Yashia is next. Are we going back to Aileen? Yashia first. Okay, here is amazing from Yashia. Hello, I'm Yashia. This is my poem. I've seen the trees painted yellow by autumn, standing on both sides of the road. But as soon as the window blows, the ground turns yellow. And the living tree full of red apples with a sweet autumn in front of my heart. I will see the garden pandy field, working with my grandmother and hear the roaring of harvest in this small village away from the crowd. The few strips of pink flowers clap higher and higher along the wall. Behind the yard of my house, and some gray birds on the electric line. I'll see the shine of the sparkling and calm deck surface of the park, and the willow sway in the wind. And I'll see the sun was setting in the west slowly, and the orange waves are surging. Yashia, yeah, wonderful use of sensory details there. We have one more for you. This last one is from Aileen and she's going to be comparing her homeland to her new land. Aileen, are you ready? Yes. Okay. Hi, my name is Aileen and this is my poem. I've seen the green mountains of Rwanda with purple leaves, green and gray trees. I've seen African palm, which is green and has delicious seeds that you can eat or use to make oil. I've seen the dirty lakes of Rwanda and their brown color. Sometimes when you go to the beach, there is garbage and no lifeguards. Uh, in New Jersey, most beaches are cleaner. I've seen beautiful red flowers near the Barrington Court factory. I've seen the cactus flowers in Arizona. I've seen the constant heat in Rwanda that makes my body dry to the bones. I've seen the four seasons in Philadelphia that change every few months. I've seen how I have been able to love the snow and the changing which makes me feel healthy. But I've been missing the food my turkey, banana, and my grandma. My brother and uncle are left behind in Rwanda. Wow, that's so amazing, Aileen. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. So you can probably see by now why I'm so immensely proud of my students. And I'm happy that you were able to share in their poetry today. It was amazing. A few of those poems have been changed since we practiced, so it was even um, more amazing to hear them fresh. Uh, so we'll, we'll start our Q&A session now. Thank you everyone for reading and for sharing. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can raise your hand and use your mic to speak or type it in the chat. I'll kick it off. I've got a quick question. Um, 
it's so clear that all of your words were chosen very intentionally and um, had such sensory images, like Miss Miss Davis said. And um, I'm wondering how many drafts you all do of each poem. So, guys, here um, I'm wondering: is there any student who could who could explain how many times you changed your poem? Like, did you just write it and that's it? Or did you, did we go back and is there a volunteer who could talk about some of the changes that you made in your poem? I'm gonna call on Christopher cause I know he changed his a little bit. Chris, did you make any changes from the beginning? Um, yes, I think I did. It was like too long. I had to make it shorter. <laughs> okay, I don't any, I don't remember the other changes I did. But I had another poem, that's what I remembered. I had like two poems and I had to choose between one and I chose this one because this one sounded better than the other one. Yeah. Was that a hard choice to make? Uh, mm, yeah, kind of. I, I like more the other one, but this one was, um, I guess, better. I remember talking about the words in his poem and there were some words that we really loved. And I think that's how we went about making those changes was we chose like what we really loved about the poems and then kind of worked from there. Thanks for sharing, Christopher. No problem. We have a question in the chat, in the chat from Barbara for Shira uh, to tell us a little bit about how the film was conceived and constructed and your collaboration with the readers in the film. Sure. Um, so the film, this is going to be a, a series. Um, and if you've ever tried to read Song of Myself, it is immense and it keeps going. And every time you open that book, you discover a new line that you want to understand what does this mean? And also your encountering really beautiful language. So this is going to be a series. And um, so, but I love the idea of how different people's voices sound and how you can hear accents, you can hear where people come from, you can hear. So um, the, the film records a number of people's voices and that idea of thinking about the voice as representing all walks of life um, and a way to share this poem and connect to people through the poem. Um, so um, it, it involves recording lots of different people reading. It, this particular segment involved going around the city, looking at how um, the city and, and nature change through the seasons. And I think because we, I was inside like everyone else, suddenly you notice, oh my God, there's snow. Oh my God, there's, you know, there's like a crocus coming up. So um, I got to go out with my camera a lot and, and film and, um, and then do woodcuts and drawings that overlay the film with people's voices and it's not done yet. Um, so that's kind of a basic idea. Thanks, Barb. Thanks, Shira and Barbara. Uh, we have a question in someone's hand is raised. Sharon? Yes. Hi, first of all, way to go. That was awesome. Um, I know our students are wonderful, but seeing this just make, you know, reinforces that. My question is to the students who decided to write, um, to incorporate two languages, was that part of the assignment? Um, did you write in one language and then change or is it just something that happened naturally? Um. For me, I wrote into languages because I forgot. I think it was Miss Shira's uh, idea, if I was not, um, if I'm not mistaken, that said uh, it'd be like really interesting. And Miss Davis also motivated me to do that because um, it'd be like more cool and like you'd feel like you were like um, feel like you're part of the poem and you can like hear how like beautiful every other languages are. So yeah. I would just want to add a little bit that I always encourage my students who speak other languages to incorporate their language whenever possible. It's just a good practice to make sure they're using their first language as much as possible. I love that part. 
That was really interesting. And I love, and I apologize, I think it was Bao Hua who included some of the translations and some of the food items that she was talking about in her poem. It was Victoria. Victoria, sorry. <laughs> that was great. I really loved that. And, and Bagua and Aileen. Um, so, got a plug there. <laughs> Excellent job, everyone. Uh, we have another question in the chat uh, from T. What lines or images do the students like about each other's poems? Um, I like to go first. Um, mine was mostly about imagery. Um, so my favorite, my favorite line was the, um, which, where is the change to colors? Oh, I can find it. Okay, the I've seen the days pass down where leaves from my backyard changed color from brown to green. Uh, I like that line because like for like just spring just came, so like seeing the colors change was really nice. I remembered. You guys could also say something about someone else's poem too. If you remember a line that you heard and you're like, oh my God, how did she do that? Uh, how did Victoria do that? Um, <laughs> I'm, for example, <laughs> um, are there any memorable lines in other poems that are not your own? Go ahead, Yao. Uh, I would say, uh, I would like uh, those slides Bao Hua and Victoria and Anna, they use the different language and you can just, you can directly feel the word, the power of the word and the, the, the things they, they try to present. Great observation. These are really carefully chosen words. And I know that we edited these poems a lot. We edited them last spring, then we came back and edited them again. So I think that's a great comment about the words being so so careful and memorable. Maybe there's a word that a, you don't. Maybe it's not even a line, but maybe it's just a word that sticks with you. I also really liked how a lot of the students made our neighborhood come to life with certain street names and people. So that was a really nice part where we can recognize what there's parts that we can't recognize at all. And then there's parts that are really familiar. And another thing that struck me is, oh, I'm sorry. Another thing that struck me is how supportive you all are in the chat of each other. And it really feels like you've built a community amongst each other, even though we've all been separated physically. And it's really just beautiful to see that. I think it's been, it was really, again, kind of life affirming and affirming of students' um, talent and drive and um, that we did come together even though we were stuck at home. And I really saw um, this, the poems grow. And even though I'm really separated, I don't teach at Furness, but have worked with Furness um, before and have always felt um, just the, the talent and drive and imagination in, in the Furness classrooms. And it's exciting because you are going into to, to a school that has students from all over the world who are coming here, learning English, coming with their own traditions of writing and poetry and language and song. And um, you're able to, I think, learn from each other in a way that's very unique and um, a way that builds language and story in a very particular and and special way and builds a community. I know Furness is a great community, even though I'm outside, but have worked with um, mural arts in this program, Southeast by Southeast, which is a neighbor to Furness for almost 10 years, working with students who are learning English and um, poetry, I think really is a great way into learning a language. It's a very unique and special way that doesn't have the kind of rules, but does, um, you know, allows you for a sense of beauty and personal experience um, in, in a very short space. So again, these, these are talented students. They are a community of talented writers and artists right here. And I know they're gonna have great futures. 
Sure, that's a great segue. We have a question in the chat about how Southeast and Southeast, Southeast by Southeast and Furness work together. Um, okay. Um, well, I think because Southeast is so close, we're a few blocks away from Furness High School. And many of the students um, who I met at Southeast a number of years ago um, went to Furness and that's how I began um, talking to teachers at Furness, Miss um, Lorch and Miss Fleesick and then Miss Davis. This is like a third generation connection. <laughs> and um, it's great because you also work with some of the parents sometimes at Southeast and then students at Furness. So um, there's a great connection. Thanks, Shira. I believe Sharon had her hand raised. If you want to speak, Sharon. If not, we've got a lot of really positive questions in the chat, some from Ermi, who says that she hopes that you all continue to write poetry and that you belong right up there with the one book, one Philadelphia poetry selections that have been featured this year. So this is very on theme. It's also the end of April, which is poetry month. So this is a great celebration of that. So guys, I just want to say, for Nest students, feel proud. Look at the comments in the chat. Take a photo. Make sure your parents see them, your grandma, your uncle, your friends, whatever. Be really proud. This is a great moment. I know that we, if we were in person, we would you know, be like high-fiving and smiling together. There's a weird Zoom silence, but I'm going to be a little loud now and just say congratulations and um, please keep up your, your great writing and your great work um, and mark the comments in the chat. You've got um, great supporters. So this is so exciting. And it's funny to say how humbled and honored you feel to be here. Actually, we're all in our homes, but the sentiment is the same. <laughs> Oh, thank you for unmuting me. I was going to um, second what Miss or Dr. Davis said when she was talking about uh, some of the words really brought me to places that I know and I appreciated that, but then um, really explained places that I didn't. And I'm, again, I'm just so proud. Congratulations, everyone. I'm wondering, do, this, do any of the students have any last words about other poems that you heard or about your own poem, something you're really proud of here. Um, maybe like a last word from, I know there's some quiet students, but I know that you all have things to say. I have a question for the students also. Maybe can anyone reflect on what it's been like to work on a poem for over a year, to have written it something and then come back to it many months later and then doing something like this. This has been a very long process. Um, how do you, can you describe the process of the last year of writing this poem? And if you're too- yeah, sure I think I off, can explain. Thank you, Stella. So when I first started writing this poem, it was around the beginning of Corona. Um, and then I was watching a lot of TV and Insider Edition that's how I came across uh, how Italy is being overrun by a lot of sea life, like dolphins and just recently jellyfish. So yeah, that's why I added it in so specifically. And cause like Italy, it was impacted the most because of Corona. And then um, when Miss Davis and Miss Shiras wanted to bring it back, bring back the poems, I was like really excited. And, and I also didn't remember what I wrote. So when I saw and read what I wrote, I was like really surprised for myself. And then after I read it, I started remembering why I wrote it. Thank you, Stella. That was great. That's exactly what I was trying to get you to think about. Thanks for sharing. <laughs> well, if no one has anything else, um, thank you all so much for sharing. Uh, it's been amazing to spend this afternoon with you. Thank you, Dr. Davis and Shira for all your work that you've done with the students and on the video. It was a beautiful presentation. Uh, thank you all for coming and for supporting these students and their hard work. And if you're interested in future events at the Free Library, you can check us out online. I mentioned freelibrary.org Whitman or 
facebook.com slash Whitman Library or Instagram at, at Second and Snyder Library. Um, and there's, it is one book, one poetry, sorry, one book, one Philadelphia, and this year's selections are poetry. So if you like poetry, you will enjoy future events in that series. Um, again, thank you for everyone for typing things in the chat. It's really beautiful to read and to hear from familiar faces. I wish uh, we had a Zoom clap feature and I wish these poets could be heard with thunderous applause for their poetry. Um, they were really moving and thank you all for sharing. Thank you. Thank you so much again to the Whitman Library, to Ms. Davis, um, to Ms. Spots, uh, to all of the incredibly talented students. And also wanted to thank the Independence Foundation for supporting this project as well. All right, thanks everyone. Enjoy your evening.